Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Monday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, No one who sets a lamp conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, he places it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not become visible and nothing secret that will not become known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. To anyone who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he seems to have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, one of the things that we see in this scripture is that the teaching that we have here has to be connected with what has gone on before. It is a part of the same teaching with the parable of the sower. So it isn't just stuck out on its own, but it has to be connected. I remember back when I was in seminary that my professor uh, of English Bible, Dr. Trena, who was an amazing scripture scholar, used to drill it into us. A text without a context is a pretext. In other words, you have to look at every text uh, with regard to what's before it and what's after it, that it all fits together. It isn't just there as a, a single scripture that, um, that we just pick out and just live. It, it has something to do with what, what's around it. For example, when it sets, says no one who lights a lamp conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed, goes back to uh, the previous verse where Jesus says, for, as, for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they've heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. So in other words, it's connected to people who take the word of God and have it bloom and have it uh, flower in their lives in a very powerful way. And he's saying when that happens, it's like light in your life and you can't allow that life to be that light to be concealed. You don't take a lamp and set it under a bed or, or conceal it in a vessel. In other words, you don't take a lamp and put it inside of another pot so that the light doesn't shine. You place the lamp on a lampstand. And so that's the same with those who have this light of Christ in their lives. They have to let it out. In one place in Scripture, Jesus said it this way, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So that the light that's in us, when it shines out, when we allow our lives influenced by the Word of God and the grace of God flowing through us, when we let that light and that life really shine on others, it will have an impact. It will make a difference in the lives of others. That's the fruit that they're talking about. The fruit is allowing that that glorious uh, expression of God's love and grace and character in our lives to come out. And when that happens, then it will have an impact. It will be seen. It will be known. And people will come to the light. They'll be drawn to that light. And when that happens, uh, it's, it's going to cause an increase in the amount of grace that we have because as we exercise the grace we're given, God works in our lives in even more abundant ways. So when the garden of our heart is properly disposed to receive the word of God, that word in us can be expressed. It isn't to be hidden. We aren't to, when we're in the world, to try to hide what God is doing or live two separate lives, but rather to allow our lives to be completely and wholly given to him. So when we think about the parable of the lamp, it goes along with the parable of the sower, that what God has placed in our life is there to shine, that wherever we are and whoever we are with, we are really to let the light of Christ uh, authentically 
come and live and light us up, that uh, we might have an impact on other people. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, one of the things about today, today is also an optional memorial for St. Januarius, a bishop and a martyr. And uh, he's also known as San Gennaro. But the thing you may remember most about St. Januarius is the fact that at his martyrdom, that uh, someone collected some of his blood and put it in a couple of, of, of ampules, put it in a couple of containers. And that blood today, although it is hardened uh, three times a year, will become liquefied. And that is an amazing miracle. It happens three times. It doesn't happen every single time always, but it happens more than it doesn't. I guess I can put it that way uh, since the time of St. Januarius. And so the first time that it liquefies is on the Saturday prior to the first Sunday of May, which is the day that uh, St. Januarius relics were returned to his native Naples. And so uh, at that time, uh, each year they look for the blood to liquefy, and more times than not it does. The second time that it liquefies is on his feast day, September 19th, today. Now, it can happen on this day or within the octave, within the eight days following. But somewhere within that period of time, they look for his blood to liquefy. The third time is in December, December 16th, which is the anniversary of the date when Mount Vesuvius erupted. But according to the traditions of the church, it was through the invocation of of St. Januarius through his prayers that the city of Naples was spared destruction when Mount Vesuvius erupted. On those three days then, we remember St. Januarius as we look for his blood to liquefy. Thousands come in anticipation of what will happen. It's a miracle. They have tried to explain it scientifically, but it is a miracle that continues to happen year after year. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.